What is good guys man, thank you for tuning back into the channel man, if you're new, make sure you hit that sub button down below to be notified for every single video that I drop man. As you can see by the title, um, she encountered Jesus after a three day water fast. Um, if you're new to the channel man, please hit that like button, go watch my other videos, you know what I'm saying, before you even hit the sub button, because I want you to see what you're getting into before you even subscribe to the channel man. I'm always trying to post some videos to help out my subscribers, you know what I'm saying, and their you know, they'll walk with Jesus, you know what I'm saying, and, um, I'm learning some new stuff, man, now, we're talking about fasting, you know, I promise, I probably never fasted one day in my life, but, um, this is something that we need to do to, um, because God, what God said, he, you gotta fast and pray, you know what I'm saying, sometimes to, re to receive any answers from him, so let's continue to the video. Hey y'all, so, I'm just gonna share my testimony of what was happening, and what, I don't know if it's testimony, but, you know, hey, or my experience with um, fasting, my water fast. And I was like, God, do you want me to get my other camera? But I was recording on my other camera and editing for my other video because I was doing a deliverance from sexual immorality. I'm not going to lie. I ain't expect a voice to sound like that. <laughs> this is off topic, but impurity, um, prayer, maintaining my celibacy and purity. And for those who are struggling in that area, I was led by Holy Spirit to go ahead on and pray that prayer. So I'll be releasing that hopefully either this Thursday or Friday. But I just kept being led by God to water fast um, a couple of weeks ago. And as I was water fasting, I was just like, okay, Holy Spirit, I'll do whatever you want me to do. I'll do whatever you need me to do. Just have your way with me because I wanted a yearning for God to deliver some things in me out of this world, such as emotional hurt, um, emotional pain, and, and just so much that I wanted God to do to really heal my heart and make me to be new, basically. And, and it's like you thought you were healed, but it's some things God was like, I, I got to still get up out of you. So... When I did my water fast on that Friday, I didn't have any hunger pains. I was Gucci. I was good. God started bringing me to Hebrews to break up the chapters in um, three to four. Three to four is because it's 13 um, chapters in Hebrews. So I broke it up and everything else. I'm like, okay, God, I'll listen. As I'm trying to uh, pray, press into God Friday, didn't hear too much, but God started opening my eyes and I started seeing Jesus in a whole new light. I think it was in the third and the fourth chapter, basically, how precious the blood of Jesus was to us. So the next day I woke up, I woke up excited to go to the museum, excited to just be with God in his presence and allow God to really court me, allow God to really love on me as a husband should. Like he, he told me he would be, he would be like, I'm your husband, you know? So I did those things throughout the day, but I felt like I was frustrated and I was agitated. And I'm like, okay, God, I'm doing this water fast, but I ain't really hearing you because you're expecting to have quick downloads and stuff like that. But, you know, there's things that takes time with God because he knows when we can receive those things and when when and when we're ready to receive those things. So I said, OK, Holy Spirit, then have your way with me. So um, that e evening when I was trying to go to bed early because, man, I was tapped out that second day. Y'all, that's when the hunger pains hit. They kicked in. I was like, let me not forget about that. They kicked in. I was ready to be like, oh, no, no, no. God, I want to eat. But in the midst of that day of that hunger pains going throughout and I was so hungry and I was dying and I was dying. It felt like I was just about to die because I wouldn't eat. That was when Holy Spirit started speaking and said, that's what it looks like to die to yourself. That's what it looks like to die to the flesh and to put it under the subjection, under the word of the God by denying your flesh of what it wants and then accepting what God wants. Because, you know, God speaks to us when we cleanse out all of the impure thoughts, all of the impure toxics in our body. And God likes to speak to us when we're when we're empty of the world so that he can pour into us because we're a storehouse and we're his temple so he wants to download things into us and i still was like wow got that revelation but god didn't hit me to that evening and show me right before i was going to bed because he would not let me go to sleep and i was wrestling with god like man why and god really showed me like zing you were ungrateful and i just started crying because i was focusing on the situation and the circumstance for god to move in a certain way or to release me from it or whatever. Sometimes, man, I ain't gonna even say sometimes. What God wants us to do, man, is to stop thinking worldly.
to stop thinking about what's going on in our life and just to trust him all the way 100%. You know what I'm saying? Just to trust him. Like, I'm going to give you an answer. Just hold on. I'm going to give you an answer. But I want you to focus on you and me getting a closer bond. You know what I'm saying? He wants us to have a closer bond with him. Actually really get to know him. Because our feelings, man, you know, a lot of our stress and feelings come from this world. You know what I'm saying? When all of our feelings and stress should be given to God. You know what I'm saying? While we're going through our situation. And if you're a true, true believer in God and you, you really, 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 you know what I'm saying? Love God the way you say you do. You're going to trust him to take care of your situation no matter how bad it looks. When you're fasting, you're going to be patient and wait on an answer from God. You know what I'm saying? And just the simple fact that no man can fix what we got going on, but God can. You know what I'm saying? He's the answer to every situation in your life. And that's how much he loves you. And I, I'm happy to say that we can go to somebody we can depend on and know they're going to fix the problem. We may, we may be confused. We may be like, man, how long is this going to take? God is working behind the scenes. He's even working when you don't, you know, you don't even know it. So that's a clear lesson just to be patient. Trust God in your situation. No matter how bad your situation looks, trust him, man. But God was like, no, this is what I called you to do. This is who I called you to. And just just with life, with with whether it's for a person, people, anything, friends, whatever you're going through. This is the family I placed you in. This is everything I've done. Zen. I've already ordained it and orchestrated it in my way. So, um... I was just crying at night, and then I just started crying and going into prayers. Like, God, I'm so ungrateful. I'm thankful, God. I got a roof over my head. I'm thankful I'm not homeless on the street like others is in Salt Lake City. I'm thankful, God, I got a food on the table. I'm thankful, God, I got a roof over my head. I'm thankful, God, that you are a good, loving father. I'm thankful, God, and I apologize to you. I apologize to you like I was in tears apologizing to God because I was so ungrateful, and I said, I'm sorry I put my eyes off of you, and the scripture came to my mind like, those who keep his eyes on me, I will keep in perfect peace, and, and I'm like zen your situation and circumstance basically always been the same but the thing is who do you look to and it made me think of peter walking on the water when peter took his eyes off of god off of jesus and basically began to sink because in the beginning he was walking through and that's when god said i need you to have that walk on water faith i need you to keep looking at me the author and the finisher of your faith and that's also that goes throughout in Hebrews, and I just was crying, and, and that night, I just, God just started ministering to me, I had got healing, I got visions, God, I encountered Jesus so much in, in into where I knew, I just felt like I stepped out of Zen, and it was just me, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, and God just going at it, and I was just leaning, and I felt Jesus just, I just felt the presence just rub my hair and just console me and tell me everything's going to be okay. I know your pain. I know your pain better than anybody else. I know the hurt you went through. I went through that same thing. Don't you know and cannot you perceive the things that I'm doing in you that I've already walked through and I've already provided a path for you. I've already made the provision. So that really, really touched my heart and as the hunger pains like cease that night I slept so good and I remember getting dreams and visions and God just was healing healing me through dreams because God does that God can heal in a dream he can heal in a vision he can heal through the word he can heal any way he wants to or through people and what really blessed me on that third day I had a new revelation of Jesus I got new downloads I got new teaching message new ministry things God wanted to put into me new visions new plans for my career as an attorney the place he was about to bring me the things that he was about to do who he was going to do them with just so much and it's like it unlocked the level of intimacy. I just journaled almost all my heart out to God, like probably seven, eight pages. When God say, how do you love me? How do you feel about me? And I went on and on and on and on about how much I loved him, how much I cared for him, how much he was my savior, how much he was my friend, how much he was the great I am that I am. And there's no other God that is besides him. And there's no other God that will go before him and come after him. And when I did that, I said, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for that revelation. And that's just to tell you, God, I'm encouraging you. 
Things don't come out unless you pray and you fast. Fasting is so important. This is why we fast. We fast for greater intimacy on God. We fast to allow the Holy Spirit to dwell in us. We fast to allow God to prune our heart. We fast to allow God to speak into our life like never before, to get the world out of us, to keep us in insanity, to keep us in purity, to keep us in holiness, and to be set apart. So I pray that my experience, which is just on a water fast, which was something I've never done before, you you speak to the Holy Spirit, and if he's leading you to fast, and you ask him what type of fast, because he's going to tell you. And when I did a water fast, it's something I've never did before. But because it was something I've never done before, it gave me experience and encounter with Christ I've never had before um, like this. And it, it, and it started healing me and it gave me a peace that surpassed all, understand, all understanding. So I just want to encourage you to fast and to pray and read God's word, meditate it like in Joshua 1 and 8, and just allow him to have his way with you. So I pray, y'all, that you know that fasting is the key and praying is the key along with faith is the key. And you all have a blessed and good thing. And I just thank you so much for listening and tuning in. And I pray that you share this message with those who don't know Christ, those who are searching for Christ, and those who are seeking for him. Remember, we are the yielded vessels. We are the ones that are supposed to go out to evangelize, to witness, to share the gospel. We are commissioned to go in and share the love of Christ. So I pray that you all share this video in love and know that Christ loves you. And whoever is watching Christ loves you, he will meet you where you at. No matter what scene you in, there's nothing too hard for God to fix. There's nothing too dirty for God to not clean, make you white and pure as snow as in Psalms 51. So I pray that you all have a great day and a good evening. And God bless our man for spitting that game, spitting them gems, man. If you made it all the way to the end, put hashtag be patient, man. Be patient. Hashtag be patient. You got to be patient. You got to wait on the Lord. Stop worrying about what's going on in your little world with the worldly things around you. I know how hard it is to focus on the problem, man. But once you do truly believe in God and trust in him that he will make a way, that he will fix everything that's going on with you, you can sleep good at night knowing that you got a real God, a true God that you serve. For real. He's real. He's real, man. He heals. He definitely makes you new. You know what I'm saying? He makes every day new. He makes your possibilities new. And you know what I'm saying? Nothing is impossible with God. You know what I'm saying? And I know sometimes we have a hard time focusing on our problems, our situations in our life. I know me personally, I, I have a hard time focusing sometimes too about situations in my life. But I always got to shake my head and be like, man, I need to stop focusing on that and focus on God. Because I know he's the only person that can fix my problems at the end of the day. Sometimes we try to do things on our own, and sometimes we th sometimes doing things on our own does not work. We need God for everything. Let's stop thinking worldly, man, and think heavenly. Let's think about what God can do in our lives. That's why he's here. He's here to help us. He's here to put us on a straight path, not lead us wrong. You know what I'm saying? Hashtag be patient. At the end of my videos, I'll say stay inspired, stay motivated, stay grinding. Till next video, I'm out of here. Peace.